Hey everybody, today we're going to look at a MIDI effect. We've done some of these in the past. I was working on a new piano sound today and I thought I would share just a little bit of what came out of it. I'm using the arpeggiator MIDI effect and I wanted to take the grid that I had created and actually send that as control data for other things as well. So not just for the piano. Let me turn off uh, my EQ for one second so you can hear this just with the arpeggiator. So it has a single chord at the beginning and then it does single note arpeggiation through the 16 steps. Well, I want to have this control something else at the same time. And in this case, what I want it to control is this equalizer. So watch this. And I need to tweak it but this, that gives you a sense. It's following this curve. So what we have is the modifier coming right after the arpeggiator. And because these steps represent velocity, what I'm using the modifier for is to take the velocity that's coming through after the arp and reassigning it to channel EQ peak for frequency. And all I did was click on learn plugin parameter and then I moved this particular frequency band. And now what I want to do is actually change the scale and the add parameter a little bit so that it stays more inside the actual thing. So I'm going to hold a chord and adjust these. So with the scale, that's going to choose how far left and right this goes. And then with the add, I can choose where that center, where it's oscillating around. And then I get the exact sound I want as like a backing track here. Now it's important right here to make sure that through is turned on. Otherwise we won't actually have velocity data for our instrument. So we need to make sure that that's turned on. Now there is one other thing we can do here which is kind of interesting because the velocity is coming off of the arpeggiator. It's going into the modifier, which is taking that data and sending it out to the equalizer. Now, if I want to have the piano or the instrument that I'm using here stay at a consistent velocity, but I want to have all of that other things remain in place, then I can use the velocity processor. In this case, we could set the threshold to be pretty flat. Depends on where that's going to be. The ratio, we set that up and then we can adjust the makeup gain. That way the original piano actually goes through and is more consistent, but that EQ now is really following that curve still. So just a couple options, and this is really great for making an instrument do different things than it may normally do. This is creating a new sound for the piano that we can only really easily capture this way. So it's a great use of these tools and a great way to creatively use our MIDI effects to make an interesting piano sound. Okay, that's it for today. We're doing a few more videos this week. Check back. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell.